are the UK Prime Minister, a person of great renown across the globe, a person of strength, integrity and respect, a figurehead surely to be proud of. Hello friends! In this video I, journalist and presenter Gregor Barnsdale, will be providing 9 top tips to get you to number 10 Downing Street. Hello BGB, how are we? Aye, not bad. Beautiful! Yes, that's right, both BGB and I will be showing you exactly how to one day land the top job yourself. To achieve this, I will be referencing the political rise of our current PM, Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson. Top guy. Indeed. Even further, the man of many names will be visually represented by our new caricature friend, Little Johnson. Hello, Little Johnson. Yes, hello. And how are we today, Little Johnson? To quote my predecessor, I'm perfectly strong and perfectly stable. Ah, Theresa, what a lass. Oh. BGB, we mustn't keep our friends waiting. Let's trundle on with our top nine tips and examine Mr. Johnson's rise to glory. Here it goes. Tip number one, be privileged. The first and perhaps most important step in becoming primest of ministers is to make sure you are born with certain privileges. Of the 55 prime ministers, 20 have been educated at Eton College, a prestigious boarding school that costs both arms and legs for tuition. 28 prime ministers can also claim to have studied at Oxford University, just as telling if not more so. Our current PM studied at both. Smart move, Boris. Mm, yes, cheers. Now, you might immediately jump to the conclusion that wealth paved the way for our PM. But let's not forget that he earned his place at Eton as a King's Scholar. This means his Eton fees were significantly reduced. Well done, Little Johnson. It seems hard work really does pay off. I'm brilliant. But wait. BGB? Bojo Jojo earned that scholarship for excelling in Greek and Latin at Ashdown House, another boarding school with a fairly costly entry. Well, yes, that's true. But he still had to work very hard to get into Oxford. And he only went and smashed it by getting yet another scholarship in classics, ancient literature and classical philosophy. There's a lesson for you, Jackie from Mansfield. Best brush up on your Latin. Mm, ego posh. <laughs> now, we're not here to tell you that this is the only route you can take. After all, our Prime Ministers have exclusively studied at other universities a whopping five times. But just saying it really blooming helps to have that gentle head start in life. So that we all too can learn dead languages instead of inhaling coal down a mine. To summarise, either be a, a womb-laden business mogul with enough spare cash to fund your education upon birth, or simply choose the correct mother to spring out of. <laughs> Once that's done, definitely go to Eton, then end up at Oxford University because you'd be silly not to. Cambridge is a good second place, but don't tell them that. Tip number two, own your privilege. But privilege alone does not guarantee success, oh no. A top education is nothing without using it correctly. Our man, Mr. Johnson, recognised his good fortune and instead of running from it, he doubled down on his elitist eccentricity to a level of actual comedic value. Yes, quite right, quite right. This has resulted in an air of authenticity that can be clung to and tells us, the voter, he's a wee bit different from the toffs in his former classroom. If he's not quite one of them, he must surely be one of us. The top tip here is to avoid claiming you're better than everyone else, instead just live it. Like Boris, make it all part of a big joke and wear your class with bumbling pride. In the end, he knows he's privileged, 
He knows we know he's privileged, so what's the point in hiding it? We're all flawed in some way or another, might as well be honest about it. Tip number three, don't be honest. Oh, though contrary to the previous point, it seems not being honest might also be absolutely fine. Not only did our Prime Minister get the sack from the Times for telling a wee fib about his own godfather, he also promised to give up his political ambitions entirely upon becoming editor of The Spectator. Needless to say, he did not do this and in fact fostered the highest ambition in the land. Hmm. Bonking Boris also got pulled from his shadow arch minister position in the Tory party way back in the early 2000s. Apparently, he had a, a cheeky affair and wasn't entirely truthful about it. My hero. You know, <laughs> it's quite funny to think about that when our former PM, Theresa May, had regular Tory scandal updates brought to her. To think she went through all the effort only to be succeeded by a man who's got more mystery children than King Robert Baratheon. Oh, the irony. But lastly, to further prove that telling the odd untruth isn't really all that bad, there's even an entire website dedicated to our Prime Minister's other supposed porkies. As we can all see, it hasn't hurt his career very much, so you're free to lie to your heart's content! <sighs> Tip number four. Pick a lane and ride it harder than a Boris bike. Have you ever found yourself saying you believe one thing, only to totally go in the other direction? Never. Well, get used to it, because despite giving the same opinion on numerous occasions, you can, in fact, break free of previous constraints when duty calls. Take our eminent blonde bombshell Boris as an example. Despite several times sharing a view that seemed in favour of the European Union, he then chose to practically lead the opposing side in the Brexit referendum. And boy, did he lead it like a trooper. I've put an article down below for you to read the full story of Boris's EU lane changing, but what does this tell us about getting into number 10? Well, perhaps the lane we are currently travelling on just simply isn't our forever lane. Sometimes something more attractive might lure us away. In the end, we're all human, prone to mistakes. Surely no one would expect us to honour our, our word when the top job is on the horizon and there's hearts of a nation to capture. Listen here then. Never ever fully commit to anything, it might just limit your chances. Tip number five, be a rampant quote merchant. Not only does Boris have an interesting history with Europe based quotes, he also has a backlog of absolute zingers that prove why having a good one liner is a great way into number 10. Now, there will be a few examples dotted within this list, but for the sake of the children, and because context matters, quite a lot of Mr. Johnson's wordsmithery won't be repeated here willy-nilly, oh no! However, to give an initial example, the following is a watered-down version of what Boris said to convince people to vote for his party back in 2005. Voting Tory will cause your wife to have bigger watermelons and increase your chances of owning a BMW M3. Ho ho ho, little Johnson. Well, with Boris finally in power of the Tories and with the Tories quite firmly in power, I fully expect Boris to be posting a new Beamer through my letterbox. But he can keep his enlarged watermelons because that errs on the side of being a tad offensive. As to other things, but they're easily glossed over, right? Anyway, remember folks, on your wee quest to supplant the wittiest man this side of the English Channel, it's best to have a cheeky quip or two up your sleeve. Tip number six, redefine athleticism. It's no secret that the UK is a fan of sports. How often do we flock to the local on some big sporting occasion to hoop 
and cheer our chosen athlete or team to glory. Mm, quite often. That's right. But did you know that sporting heroism is just one more string to the bow of our pre-eminent leader? Oh yes, not only does Boris adore rugby, he's even a fan of tennis and jokes that he could take on another Boris. Germany's Boris Becker, no less. That would be entertaining, right, Andy? Yes. Surely, with all these other demands to contemplate, it can't be possible to win the public support whilst having a great time with bats. Mm, and balls. Now there you would be wrong. In fact, it's very important that you commit a significant amount of your time to winning sporting events at all costs. You've simply got to demonstrate how much of a winner you are. Just like our champion bulldozer did when competing against a Japanese child. So remember, if you too can defeat Japan's best, you're well on your way to the top. Tip number seven. Have stellar refurbishment plans. Need I say any more? You can't possibly even consider taking the top job of PM without knowing exactly what you would do to get rid of any trace of a Downing Street flat's former occupant. Oh, and whilst you're planning the new colour scheme, it's best to invest. Tip number 8. Absolutely never admit to wanting the job until you're in it. To go alongside an obviously down-to-earth approach to things, it's important that you aren't at all obvious about your ambitions. In fact, it's probably best advised to be openly against your chances of getting to number 10. Take this quote from 2004, where Boris was responding to readers' questions in The Independent. Um, my chances of being PM are about as good as the chances of finding Elvis on Mars, or my being reincarnated as an olive. Boris should never have been so hard on himself, but modesty is clearly a tactic that has worked for him, and it can absolutely work for you too, just like in sports. People like winners, but they also love a good underdog. To rub cement into the wound, this additional quote quite nicely segues onto our final tippity top tip. How could anyone elect a prank who gets stuck in a zip wire? <sighs> tip number nine. Be exceptionally British. Here we go, the biggie. Whether it be a classy British accent or an unwavering devotion to British values, in the race to number 10, it's almost impossible to get anywhere without some element of national pride. Though, before we proceed, it must be noted that, ironically, the stalwart British value of queuing seems to only apply if the person in front of you in the race to number 10 is okay with performing the titular character in a performance of Julius Caesar. Et tu, Gove? <sighs> Our Mr. Johnson is a master of patriotism and is perhaps best known for his partaking of iconic British activities like flag waving, preferring a red London bus, and appearing on Have I Got News For You? As Prime Minister, this trend of great Britishery has been continued with an update to our government's national plane. Now, Anyone looking skyward will see the red, white and blue flying high overhead, proudly paid for by you and I. And despite looking exceedingly similar, it's definitely not from British Airways. Number 10. Downing Street. Oh, here we are. Number 10 itself. The end game on our political adventure. After all that, do you think you have what it takes to seize the keys to the kingdom? Unlimited power. Will you conquer this list more thoroughly than Boris conquered the classics? Is number 10 within your overtly athletic yet British grasp? Are you a decoration wizard just waiting in the wings? 
If so, follow this sage advice, and not only can you be just like Johnson, you may get to sack him too! Well, what to do now? BGP. Yes? When's the next election? I think it's coming soon, you. Best start getting ready. Yes. Yes, I might just do that. 